everybody and welcome to a special episode of Jurassic World Alive because they there are huge updates coming to the game and I thought that uh, why not we take a look at these set updates and also if we have time as well afterwards um, just go in the game and because there's some new things that I've done that maybe I'm not so proud of but I caved <laughs> but anyway here we are as you can see the Ludia forums right here um, we have an overview. So they say this update is focused on convenience features like multiple fusions and contextual teams. Buckle up DPG members, a variety of anticipated enhancements. So the contextualized teams. Ever wished you could play friendly battles without needing to redo this weekend's tournament team section? Well, we should know more. So I think this is basically meaning that we can now have set teams. And there you go. You got my team. You got a friendly team. And you got a PvP team. Um, it does seem to only be two teams, which is a bit of a shame because you get the tournament and you have your PvP. And maybe you also have your friendly. So it would be nice to have an extra tab. So you could have three teams or maybe just a few tabs would be nice. Um, creatures on PvP friendly and tournament teams cannot be placed in the sanctuary while they are in your teams. Okay, I think that, that I think that's regular. I think that's normal. Uh, a creature that is used in a PvE context, strike events, blah, 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 can be placed into a sanctuary. That's okay. Now, multiple fusion. Yes, thank you. So, uh, reach... Well, we, got, we got little images here. Can we zoom in? There we go. Okay, so tap the purple multi-fusion button. You can select up between 5, 20, 50, 100, or 250 fusions. The total of the fusion is shown at the end of the process. So it shows you how much DNA. There you go. You've got little balls. The little, little circles, which says probably like 5, 20, 50, 100, 250. And then your total DNA is there. So that is actually really good. Especially when you get these um, these rare like hybrids and stuff like that, where you let's be honest, you don't want to be like, Ugh. <laughs> so that's that's a really nice feature that they've added. Uh, the campaign mission seven two was made easier by changing the opponent's stat boost tier from eight to five. This makes them ooh, maybe we can do it for on seventy two. Interesting alliances. This is hair sorely needed. You can now see how long ago someone was last online in your friends list and alliance member list. This will help use manage their alliance, well, help users manage their alliance and friends based on specific attendance needs. We know features to help alliance leaders manage their members are much requested and we're happy to deliver this first one. In future, we're hoping, so it's good. It's not amazing because what would be amazing is to have a feature that, I mean, it tells you when they were last on. It's a good help, but there needs to be more. There needs to be, like, how much DNA have they did they get towards the Alliance mission? Because uh, all you see is the one who's the most contributed. There should be, like, you know, this much, this much, 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 and then zero, 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 zero for the people who are inactive. That would be much helpful. Much helpful, very helpful. Uh, using scent capsules in parks. Long-time players will remember that scent capsules used to have an unofficial side effect of some time. Oh, did they? Attracting park creatures when used in parks. That was when you would, you would set out your lure, if you'd be in a park. A regular creature would come up. Then what you would do is go battle in a different creature, or go dart a different creature, come back to the main menu, or the the, uh, the GPS bit, and it will have reset the, that sent creature to a part creature. Um, we brought back to this feature in a more official way. This change was made possible by technical changes brought in the previous update and paves the way for some other improvements to our geolocation gameplay in the future. In the meantime, so what is this? The following scent capsules can be used in parks to attract park creatures. Small, large, rare, epic. So now they actually do work in parks. There's not like a set. So that's good. Uh, especially if you want something like Tanotosaurus, that could be really helpful. Geolocation distribution 1.10. We made some significant changes to our map system and distribution of objects to accommodate for future features and improvements following these changes. We asked you to send us the feedback. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Generate more objects in zones that have <laughs> seen a decrease in points since the previous update. These changes will roll out to all zones over the coming weeks. On top of that, one key change you'll notice in that objects on the map will sometimes change places every one to four weeks to provide variety. We've always been committed to making sure our game is playable outside, not just in big cities for fair. So I think what they mean by this is stuff like sanctuaries and drops, like supply drops. Now you may have noticed yourself, I've noticed it when I've played my iPad in comparison to my iPhone. Um, 
or any other device is that the drops are different. Now, there's different, like, my, my, it might be right next to me, and then on my iPad, it'll be somewhere else. It looks like they're actually rolling this out officially so that they change every now and again, so it's not always the same thing. So if you're stuck in a location where they're too far away, you've only got a few next to you, you never know. In a week's time, it might be even better. Drone targets, here we go. We have adjusted drone targets of the following creatures to bring the difficulty to the same level as other creatures of the same variety. Not too sure what that means, but all right. Sanct pterosaurs are in sanctuaries now. Pterosaurs and other flying creatures are now being added to sanctuaries. That's good. Uh, although I don't, apart from Pteranodon and Quetzal, uh, I don't think there's any other need for the other ones. Maybe there is. Maybe there's other ones that I don't know about. Other improvements. Blah, 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 blah. Emotes, there we go. <laughs> uh, some creatures have new animations when caring for them to provide more variety. That's quite nice. See, I do care, really. <laughs> Emotes, this is good. Players can now communicate using in-game emotes featuring Mr. DNA. Some pre-selected short sentences can also be used. Um, these sentences are automatically translated to other opponents' languages. That's really helpful. Uh, emotes can be used during the action sections, phases in battle to praise or taunt your opponent. You can deactivate this feature via the emote tray. The mute persists from battle to battle, so if you change your mind, you have to manually use the unmute button. So, a bit like with Clash Royale, you had um, people taunting in that. You're going to be able to do the same with Mr. DNA. I'm sure it won't be as, uh, I don't know, what, what would you let's say, as uh, infuriating maybe? Um, as it is in Clash Royale, as it, well, when I used to play it. Um, but it looks like we're going to get some, and you can also mute it as well, so that's quite helpful. <laughs> Ability updates. Cautious, now these are big ones. Cautious Strike. Um, I found when you fight an interrupted gen 2 so hard because it's it could just do cautious strike and win a battle like it, it gets immunity for a while or like evasive it cleanses itself it gets a speed boost it's absolutely unstoppable and that's just a regular thing you do over and over the addition of bypassing evasive ability is the only change that has been made to cautious strike you see even that so that's good I mean at least it's being nerfed a little bit uh, regenerate and run. Uh, regenerate and run is where you can do a hit, regenerate, and then leave. Stuff like the epic Iguanodon hybrid had that. This powerful move is toned down by removing the cleansing component. The main goal is that swaps usually perform all of the required cleansing by virtue of removing the creature from the field. But we want to allow the creature that wants to cleanse using a swap to remain vulnerable to swap prevention negative effects. In this way, you can prevent, um, there it is, a Montoguanodon and a Badgetonodon from healing and swapping out all the time. Ah, okay, interesting. Uh, with one well-timed swap present prevention effect. That doesn't sound as opposed to Regenerate Run, the regeneration ability still keeps its cleansing component. Regenerate Run still sounds a bit OP to me. I don't know, there's not many creatures that can have a well-timed stop swap, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, okay, new abilities, here we go. Resistant Ferocious Strike, increased damage plus 50% for two turns and you do one attack. That's quite nice. Swap in Savagery. Uh, now this is interesting. Attack 0.4 times the target's max HP bound for two turns. Editor note, does not bypass armor or shields. So, this is the biggest change that's coming, or one of the biggest ones. Draco Ceratops has been nerfed so much. It used to have Rampage and swap in, like the Rampage. It would come in, bypass shield, whatever, immunity, bam. And it already, I think it was shield. And it would do two times damage right off the bat. Then it got nerfed, so it couldn't bypass shields or armor. And now Draco Ceratops is getting nerfed again. So now instead of having the swap in, uh, and do loads of damage, it has a swap in Savagery. So the attack is 0.4 times of the target's max HP, making it even worse. So instead of like swapping in and basically KOing a whole creature, uh, Draco Ceratops will not be able to do that anymore. It'll just do like, what? What is that, like uh, less than half? Point, point 0.4? Is, is it really point 0.4? Is one times like the full health and point 0.4, so it does about half. That's still a lot though. Like, if it does almost half the attack, like, the, the dinosaur's max health, you have to be, you have to have just a little bit less than half health, and it'll take you out, no matter how much health you have. Don't know if that is a nerf. In certain situations, that's a buff. Especially if they've got loads of health. But anyway!
anyway, uh, here is, a, is what you've been waiting for. The new creature's Badger Dinosaur. So this one has the Rampage and Heal, or uh, Heal and Run. The Megaloceros, the Woolly Rhinoceros, and the Woolly Mammoth. Uh, Badger Dinosaur, rare, resilient, high hit point sauropod. Uh, Megaloceros, rare, resistant, fa fast tank. Um, the Woolly Rhino, epic, resilient, uh, anti-tank tank. Interesting. And the Woolly Mammoth, an epic, resilient, anti-tank tank again. But these are the interesting ones. These are the new hybrids. Um, we've got another, what seems to be Diplotator hybrid. So we've got Diplovenator. Now we've got Scaffotator. Um, the Monolo Rhino. The Mammotherium coming from Jurassic World, the game. Erlicogamma. So I'm guessing that's... Uh, it could be a Lycosaurus Gentle. I mean, we'll find out. Um, Baginotodon and Alloraptor. Alloraptor is made from Allosaurus Gen 2 and Delta. Ooh. It's a fast anti-tank tank. tank <laughs> anti-tank creature that can use its definite impact and rendering takedown to deal with armored and or shield foes. Ooh, it has pounce and distraction. Ooh, that's quite good. A uh, dollar special mobility trait emerges of the hybridization process as immune to swap prevention. Not too sure what that means. Alloraptor is at least immune to deceleration. That's good. Oh, oh my god, that's a really good dinosaur. Uh, Badger to note on. Legendary resilient healing tank, super hybrid, regenerate and run shield vulnerability. Um, training a, a Montaguanodon stunning ability. So this is the next evolution for a Montaguanodon. You're going to have to get this guy. Uh, Gain swap in heal and retains regenerate and run. Oh, swap in heal. So it swaps in and gets health. That's actually, I think, that, is that new? Swap in heal? I don't think I've seen anything with that before. It can also bellow at the opponent to gain some temporary shield and long term speed advantage. Why speed advantage? Does it, does it get. No, no. Okay, light badge. So it is immune to damage over time and has the effective ability. Combo of superior superior vulnerability and devastation, as expected. But Janitodon has high health, average attack, and low speed. Bajidosaur is a torsauropod that is at her best when she can use her superior vulnerability before attacking with devastation. With swapping heal, she can be swapped out for something else when she has taken some damage. Then swap back in in order to heal up and take another hit. Bella lets her gain shields and high and speed control against faster creatures. Badgers has average damage. Interesting, that one seems like it's gonna get a lot of use. Erlico Gamma, fusing Charlie and Elicosaurus Gen 2. Okay, finally Elicosaurus Gen 2 has something. This creature remains as cunning as it pro progenitors? As it's uh, progenitors, is that just the previous one? Short of being stunned or taken out, uh, nothing can keep Erlicogamma at bay with its immune to swap prevention. Does that mean that if something swaps in and does something, it doesn't affect? Or that it just, opponents can't swap out when it's in? Need to be, I, I, is it just me that's not getting that? It's probably just me. It uses precise pounce and rampage and run to deal tremendous amounts of damage while relying on deliberate, hair, yeah, deliberating distraction, all these words, to keep its opponent's damage in check. When facing opponents of small or similar speeds, it can use its minimal speed up strike to gain or keep its fast edge. Erlico Gamma has high, higher than average damage, lower than average health and extreme speed. It is also only an epic. Interesting. Uh, Mammoth Theorem combining the anti tank tank with high attack, high health, and average armor. Okay, it sounds really good. I th is, this, is this the unique? This is the unique. No, it's not. It's not the unique. Uh, Mammoth Theorem can duel against most armored and or shield foes. It can increase that powerful attack with Mammoth's own persistent, ferocious strike. In between these offensive bursts, Mammoth Theorem regains lost health and cleanses any impediments. Impediments, that's the one. We dig in and keeps the speed superiority with Bellow. Oh, we'll get to the end though. Uh, this is the unique guy. Uh, with average damage, high health, average speed, and a bit of armor, Molo Rhino can defeat resilient opponents with lethal wound and definite impact. With a lot of ability and nullifying strike. Ooh. It can successfully deal with dodgers, 
with distracting impact. It can deal with high damage opponents for a few turns thanks to the immunity. Molar Rhino's speed cannot be reduced. Oh, giving it an edge in some matchups against slow speed tanks. So what is it? It is the Woolly Rhino and the Monolometrodon. Did we cover that? Mono, oh, is that? A... Well then, is that a new one? Mo, 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 mo. Mo, mo, mo. No, it must already exist. I don't recognize that. Have I not got that one? I'm probably, maybe I don't have that one. And the final one, Scaphotator, which is Diplotator and Scaphogathus. Oh, that's interesting. He has a good hybrid. This has a, a, a unique hybrid. And you're going to have to use that for Diplotator as well. Results in the very mobile Scaphotator with swap in wound and swoop. So it could swap in, do the damage, and then swoop to do even more. But I'm assuming it'll be locked in. Scavenator is highly mobile and efficient at inflicting enough damage over time to take out a creature in three turns. Scavenator boasts higher than average attack and health and high speed. In between its arrival and its departure, Scavenator has access to regeneration and distracting impact. With distraction, Scavenator can reduce the opponent's offense to zero, bearing any ferocious buffs and set itself up to swoop out a turn later. So you swap in, do a wound damage, take a hit, regenerate or go for um, distraction making they them do zero damage to you and then you do swoop and get out of there the battle bannock uh, the, the battle bannocks the battle balances top tier tweaks definite rampage made interrupt gen 2 and erdendus maxima a bit too strong so now it doesn't bypass um uh i don't think it bypasses dodge now I think they've taken that out. Yeah, it's now defense shattering rampage, basically. Draco Ceratops swapping damage is now based on the max HP of the target creature, which means that it must be used as a finisher rather than a team cycle assassin, which is what it was. Um, and they've, they, they list the reasons here. We believe that you can counter by using long lasting or swapping shields, higher armor, or, and or high H or HP left, percentage left on the creature. Even with a swap in critical hit, if your creature has at least 51% health left, it cannot be defeated instantly. So it, you can get a critical with this. this. That's interesting. This also means that unarmored, unshielded creatures with 40% or less of their HP are indeed still vulnerable to a Dracoceratops swap in. Um... Because of this, it is an important change. Uh, I gotta admit, they've been slowly nerfing Draco Ceratops. And that's pretty much it. There's some other creature updates there that you can see. Some miscellaneous fixes with the leaderboards and bug fixes. And that's about it. So, how about we jump in the game and see what's changed? <laughs> what I've what I've done anyway, not what's changed, because this update isn't live yet. Oh my god, there's a Kentrosaurus. Oh no. Oh, I need it. I need it, but I'm terrible with darting on this. Oh god, okay, ready, ready, ready to uh, cringe hard. Although, saying that, that's that's a popper. Oh god, oh god, yep, yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's really far away, so I doubt we're gonna get 100. Oh, 25, yep, oh, 110! Not bad, not bad. So, not too long ago, there was a sale. Uh, there was a sale in the market, and the sale was... I don't, I don't know if it's still going. Is it still going? No, it's not. Although, for books, oh god, no, let's not do that. Oh, I can get rid of my last book, shall we? So, I bought the, um, I, I think it was the Mountain of Cash, which was half price. So, it's 15,000. Now, eh, that's a lot. That's a lot. And I finally broke because I was like, I play this game loads. Why don't I just do it? Like, I know, I know, I know, I sort of pride myself on like everything I've got in this game, at least, you know, for a long time anyway, haven't bought, haven't spent any money on it. But now I'm playing a lot and I'm like, Ugh. sod it, it's a business expense. <laughs> so I'm like, there you go, and it's 50%. But what I've done is I've just spent it on boosts. And to be fair, 2,000 bucks for 100 speed, it's kind of a ripoff. Because two two thousand bucks, that's, that's, that's a lot. It's a lot of bucks, and a hundred is just one boost. So I, you know what? I'm tempted actually just to keep my three thousand bucks and maybe spend them on some epic sense and get some good DNA. So here's my team at the moment. I have. We're probably gonna switch out Draco Ceratops. That's gonna go. Um, I'm tempted now to max out this guy. Really tempted, because. It doesn't look like he's getting a nerf, like on the changes on the update. It's not there. In fact, actually, F9, 
And that'll stop that recording. Oh god, we're low battery. Uh, <laughs> I did the open. That's how I sat. I said F9, it turns out low battery. Um, so I am tempted. I am really tempted. And I, 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 it's just a really good dinosaur. Solid. it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. There you go. There you go. Level 30. My second ever level 30 takes it to 2,000 attack in one hit. What single hit? 2,000 attack. That's crazy. We could keep on maxing if we want to, but sod it. Who cares? Um, uh, on this max for Magnetator. I think, yeah, I did. Okay. Let's get 100. Let's get a hundo on this baby. 30. I'll take. 30 is not too bad. Um, so I do have a lot of speed and a lot of attack to put on some dinosaurs. You'll notice I have Dita Cheris ready to go to level 29. Um, I haven't put any boosts on it. I don't think I've put any boosts on Draco Ceratops either, just because I was really wary. No, I haven't. I was really wary that he was going to get a nerf. I, I felt it was coming, and I felt... I shouldn't be having him in there. To be fair, I have an epic in there, and he's a legendary. And I'm more inclined to use the epic than I am uh, the legendary. And also, it costs a bunch to get epics up. Now, what I'm thinking is having Griper Suchus in here, this guy. Because people in my alliance have said they fought up, they fought like a level 31 of these that had maxed health, like absolutely crazy health. And it was just, it would, because it, it's like passive is rendering counterattack, which does 25% of target's health. So in four hits, it's dead, right? So all you need to do is just regenerate and then immobilize long protection regenerate, immobilize, long protection, and your health will go, I mean, the health is a 50% and cleanse, and then you take you take slow hits and then back up to 50%, and you're dealing damage all the time. So, I'm thinking, we'll get a croc. We'll get a croc on the team. Um, that's my amazing Australian accent. I do apologize if anyone's Australian who's watching. Uh, only thing is, I don't have too much griper sutures. Um, but, 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 this can be negated because now I have some amazing boosts. So we'll go for about two pops with this guy. And I have been constantly requesting the um, the other ingredient, that rare, because, in I mean, in the Alliance, I think it's, I'll tell you what, let's, let's donate, should we donate? We, we're having some change with the Alliance, let some people leave. You know who you are, how dare you? <laughs> um, but I mean, the, the main reason is I just want active uh, active players in the game. And so does everybody else in the Alliance. They, they all want active players in here. And uh, there you go. Somebody's already, somebody's already asking for a guan. I have 145,000. You can have all of that that you want, just as long as you give me the um, the pur pur purglyph, purglyph, or whatever it's called. I'll take that 500, baby. Um, yeah. Oh, that's right. I haven't collected the incubators. I don't think for the alliance. Have I? I don't think I have. Oh well, let's go. So basically, I was on the train from like it was Aberdeen, which is up in Scotland, all the way to Newcastle. Uh, and it was about a four hour journey and all of that blue is me in one day um, The same with that which to be fair isn't that that much. Oh god, we're five percent what? Six supplies and that as well So we'll just we'll quickly open these and we'll we'll level up grab the sutures and we'll use it We'll do that's even get a battle for it So I mean the prizes aren't too great and I wish we could choose the prizes because that, I don't know, it's just another incentive and more control that a leader, an alliance leader, can have. Um, so we'll not bother with those, we've got 5%. Um, and we'll go on uh, here. I'll switch out, I'll switch out Draco Ceratops for the dude. Um, and we'll also upgrade his health. So I have 300. Um, and I'm tempted just to put, yeah, I'm gonna put them all on. All health, so 4,100. He is still only level 23, let's be fair. So now attack that I want to put on things. I'm gonna put a little bit on Erla Dominus, just because it's Erla Dominus. If you can get that, like, 2,000 damage or 4,000 damage on the Rampage Run, and I'm gonna increase the health. Sorry, just the speed, because Really, Erla Dominus needs like 143 to be speed efficient. Uh, we still have like two or three. We have three pops of attack. Um, and I'm tempted because actually my Magnetator, it's been a few times that if it just had a little bit more attack, it could have killed something. So I'm going to give it that. I'm going to give it an extra like 80 attack almost. I could give it over 100 extra attack, but that'll do. I like saving. So now we'll go into battle and I am still in the Gyrosphere Depot. Oh, season ended? Oh, 
3,000 Alanqua. Wow, okay, well, new season. Ooh, the Amber Gubba season. Fantastic. Yes, yeah, so have we all been... Oh, did I go down? Uh, did everyone just get put to fight? Oh, God, we're going to have some crazy people. This has just happened, by the way, so we're going to get some super high... Either super high level... Actually, it'll only be super high levels, won't it? It'll be people on my... Anyone who's higher than me, <laughs> basically. Griper suit, just... Griper, gripper lift, go for it, my buddy. Oh, I get to... So That'll be level 30, won't it? It's level 30. Oh, God. Oh, God. Uh, let's go for long protection. He does have an armor piercing. Oh, he immobilized me. So what's he trying to do? What's he trying to get up? Interesting. He's he's trying to make me stop switching, maybe? Ooh, greatest stunning strike. I am not immune to stuns, am I? No. That's not so good. Okay, never mind. Right, so he's going to go for ferocious. Um... I'm gonna go for regenerate here. He's gonna try and up his attack. It's it's just it's gonna be just trying to like survive each other. Yeah, he's gonna go for ferocious. Uh, oh my god! But I'm gonna do a render to him. Okay. Wow. A level. I mean, this is not a fair fight. This is not a fair fight. Like, what are the boosts on him? Pretty darn high. I've lost this one a hundred percent. Uh, well, we'll immobilize him now, just to try and get his ferocious strike to wear out. So, did that work? Is it gone now? No, it's not. We're probably going to die. Yep, we're going to die. Yep, there it is. So, if I was also a level 30, I would have survived there and done a lot more damage. But guess what? I'm not a level 30. I wouldn't be surprised if the whole team is comprised of all level 30s. With amazing... Uh, and look, there he goes. Another stun. He's faster. I mean, to be fair, it is thought also. And ferocious impact. How much damage is that going to do? It's gonna be like this. It's gonna it's gonna be like this for the next few days until everybody who is at the highest of the high goes back up there and buggers off. <laughs> Cause it, I mean, there's no fun in playing the game when it's like this. When the when the season gets reset, everyone gets put. I think everyone gets put down five thousand. And it's negative. Level thirty, right? Level thirty, six thousand five hundred, which isn't too crazy health. But he's probably just gonna go for a rampage. Yeah, he's gonna do about. 2,600. If I can get one kill, I'll be happy. Sod it. We do have a level 29 Trichosaurus. <laughs> so may, may as well give it a shot. Like, what, what can he do? He's not- He's faster than me! What? I guess I haven't boosted him. He's faster by like one. Whoa! Okay. Is that level 30 as well? 26 though. That's pretty- Oh god. Have we run out? Oh god, we ran out of space on the memory card. I don't know when that happened. But you still have my voice. So that's something. <laughs> I need to clear out the memory card. <laughs> oh, lethal wound. Oh, he got a crit with it as well. Of course he did. Right, well, Sodom, we're gonna kill. Oh, I got a kill. That's it. I'm happy. I got a kill. Don't care. Bam! There you go. And we're gonna. Oh, God. Oh, do you hear the bleedy sound effects? Oh, oh, is it me? Because I'm bleeding. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, we got one. I'm happy with that. I'm happy with that. I'll take it. Now, he's going to go for the instant stun or something like that, I'm assuming. Oh, no, he goes for Ferocious because he just wanted to kill me. So there you go. 4,200 in one hit. Fantastic. So there it is. There is the update. In fact, can we go on the leaderboard and see just where people are? Who's who's top one? 5,600. So yes, I don't, I don't even know who we fought just there. But I'm assuming it's going to be somebody who's pretty darn high. Actually, but the Irritator, the so Wow, that... For a team, to be fair, that only has three uniques, it's pretty dangerous. But I'm also assuming that a lot of his team just is maxed up on mods, like the, the boosts. Like, Irritator, Stegadus, you just give them a load of health. You'll be fine. So I'm going to wrap it up there. There it is for the update for what's coming in Jurassic World Alive. And if you enjoyed this video, leave a like. Until next time, I'll see you later. Oh, bye-bye.